episode 19. We're here. Let's go, Dr. Warren and Antoine. We are here with episode 19 of the top 20 most common complaints and injuries with athletes. And uh, this isn't necessarily falling into a, a complaint per se, but it leads to a lot of complaints. And that is, uh, I'm trying to get my abs stronger at home and I'm straining my back at my neck from doing it, okay? And the first thing I think about is crunches when people say that, right? Or uh, any other type of flexion-based movement where they're putting too much strain on their neck and their upper back, okay? Uh, the first thing to understand is what is your core, first off, right? And we've kind of touched on this a little bit in previous videos, all right? Um, your core exists of, I want you to get in your mind a Campbell soup can, okay? The label on the front, those are your abs. That's the shiny, that's what you want to have nice and, and strong, right? You want to have good abs. That's the Campbell soup can, the label on the front. That's part of it. Really what's uh, really important with your core is your instructions on the back side, your back muscles and your spine itself, all the muscles that surround the back of the label. That label's connected around the can by your oblique muscles and your transverse abdominis. So you've got all these muscles wrapping around, okay? Well, if you only had a can that didn't have a top and a bottom, it wouldn't be very strong and it wouldn't hold anything in, right? That's because you do have a top and a bottom to your core. Your top is your diaphragm coming down and your bottom is your pelvic floor here, okay? These muscles that help support. And there's a lot of fluid in the center, just like you would have in your, your soup can, right? And that is your, what's called your peritoneal sac for, for um, for who's, whoever's interested, okay? So you've got a fluid filled centered, you've got all the top, the sides, everything to make a strong can, all right? Now, if you only work that label, if you only do abs and you're like, all right, let's do our crunches, let's go, you'll have a really fun, uh, shiny front label and it'll be look really good, but you might have a little stress to the back and you're not using the rest of those muscles, you're not supported. So if I had a, uh, if I had a Campbell soup can and I put a dent in it, in the front, and I put pressure on the top, what happens? It's gonna explode out the back. It's gonna, it's gonna break, right? It's not fully supported. All right, now, that's an extreme. I'm just kind of giving you that visualization. I want you to see what, so how you can support your core as a whole, all right? And now that you've got that image that the core is just more than the ass, it's almost like a barrel or a can, uh, how do you work all those muscles, right? And how do you do that without straining too much on your neck and your upper back? Well, well, we've got the answer for you. Alrighty, walk me through what we're doing. Let's go, Antoine, we're gonna go and start on your back. All right. All right, so knees are gonna be flexed up at 90 degrees. I've got cam hair all over your pants now, Antoine, I apologize. I am cam. You are cam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so take one hand and put it on your chest, one hand on your stomach. And this is just to practice that diaphragmatic breathing, okay? So breathing in through your nose, exhaling out through your mouth. You're gonna do that for about a minute. You're gonna warm up that first muscle, the diaphragm, okay? That's gonna be the start of your routine. All right, once you've done the 60 seconds of warming up that diaphragm, then we're gonna go right into what's called a dead bug. Your back and your neck stay completely flat on the, on the ground or the, uh, the bench, wherever you're doing this. Your knees come up to 90-90, to we like to call. Your arms go straight up in the air, and then you go opposite arm, opposite leg, okay? So one arm goes back, the other arm stays nice and still, and the other leg stays nice and still. You exhale your arm and your leg back up, and you pause, 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 pause for me, Antoine. Good, and then we're gonna go arm and leg. Keep this still, good, keep this still. Good, and then come back up. Good, Antoine, you're getting it, good. Go ahead, opposite arm, opposite leg. Oh, no, see, it can get a little confusing, a little right brain, left brain, <laughs> right? It's challenging, it's a good way to wake up your day. Start your day, get your brain rolling. Go ahead, keep these still, go ahead and reach, get this leg up, breathe, exhale up. Let's go, Antoine, you're gonna be a pro at this by the end of your eight months here. Go ahead and reach, reach, reach. All right, I get psyched for dead bugs, you can tell. So these are this is a great exercise to do to start off that routine. It one, gets you into that gait pattern, which is nice to have. Um, it's a, it's a, engaging those muscles in the front that we just talked about, the obliques, the abs, and it's, a, and it's really coming from a lot of support with your diaphragmatic breathing, all right? So you're starting to loosen up a little bit, you're starting to get into a little bit of a flow uh, and you get a little stronger there, that's step one. Diaphragmatic, diaphragmatic breathing, one, two, dead bug. 10 on each arm, 
Do a few sets until you start to feel that burn wherever you're at in terms of uh, your core strength, okay? Haven't moved the neck at all, haven't crunched up at all, but definitely gotten a core burn so far with that. Antoine was already feeling it after like four. Um, and that, that's, that's common if you do it the right way, if you do it slow and you, and you work hard through it. All right, now we're gonna do a Dr. Jeff special. So if you guys have noticed, I've been wearing uh, in the last couple videos this Orioles um, pullover. Dr. Jeff is the team chiropractor for the Baltimore's Baltimore's local uh, sports team here, and and, uh, and Dr. Blake is as well, my brother and my father. So I'm just repping the gear that they get. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And then Antoine's got the Professional Baseball Chiropractic Society on his, on his shirt. He's repping that. So a um, little side note. Now we're going to go ahead and show them that uh, the scissor exercise. So hey, go ahead and extend. Am I missing something? No. Okay, so go ahead and extend your legs out for me. Okay, elevate your legs for me, Antoine. Good. And I want you to do scissors back and forth good so up and down and he's crossing over his ankle go ahead and cross over a little bit more boom hit it and stop boom good and slow good good control good control go good and i'll speed it up just a tad just like that and breathing his back is staying flat his neck is relaxed and it's really a good lower abdominal uh, workout for your core okay so that's going to be done for about 30 seconds see how you do go ahead and relax Antoine um, 30 seconds of that and then if you can build it up to 60 seconds of going back and forth and you can also go up and down as well so crisscross up and down all right see if you can get a minute total for that that's a really great lower ab exercise without straining the neck or the upper back okay also work so far all right, I'm gonna throw a little curveball and I wanna add a routine in for the pelvic floor. This is something that I pull out from time to time. If you're curious about how to strengthen your pelvic floor, this is a really simple exercise. So go on your hands and knees for me. Okay. I'll be right back with two pillows. Oh, I was looking for pillows. <laughs> So Antoine's never done this exercise before, so I'm going to have to teach it like I would to someone new, which is perfect. Heels here, okay? Hips at 90 degrees, so don't, don't arch here. Good. Hands underneath the shoulders, okay? What I want you to do, Antoine, is I want you to drive your ankles down to the floor, all the way down. Your feet are going to go a little flat, and I want you to go hard as you can. So it's going to be a slow progression. You're going to press down slowly. Keep pressing down like you're trying to kick your the front of your shins to the ground and go to the point where you almost feel like your knees are going to elevate off the ground. Okay, so it's going to be about 10 seconds until you get to that maximum contraction. So it's a slow progression, slow, slow. Now kick harder, kick harder, straight down, straight down. Your knees are going to try to lift up. Don't let them. Keep them s secure. It's more challenging than you think. Okay, so he presses down into the pillows. Make your feet go a little flatter for me. There, good. So the feet are a little bit more flat so that he can press his shins down like that. He's gonna keep pressing. He's gonna get to what he thinks is the barrier and then his knees are gonna wanna raise up. He's gonna hold that, uh, hold that position. He's not gonna let his knees raise up and he's gonna feel a lot of work in his abdominal area. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and press down. So it takes about five seconds of slow compression until he gets to the point that I think is uh, really where he engages that pelvic floor well. And then he's gonna hold that isometric contraction for five seconds, okay? Do it, do it about 10 times to get that feeling of that lower pelvic floor working, okay? Finally, we're gonna go through, not finally, we got two more after this, right? Yep. All right, go ahead and tell me what the next one is, Antoine. So we're going to the wall? Oh, uh, wait, we forgot one. Yeah. So if you have a weight at home, go ahead, go on to your back. You're gonna go ahead and grab a dumbbell or a kettlebell. If you have a kettlebell, you're gonna hold it like this or like this. And if you have a dumbbell, you're gonna hold it um, secure in your in your grip okay so one arm at a time let's go ahead and show both both hands overhead with this type of weight okay so arms straight up good elbows come to 90 90 again good or excuse me uh, knees come up to 90 90 <laughs> like elbows. your elbows here right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and slowly you're going to bring this weight back you're going to kick your legs out forward your back is not going to arch off the ground at all and then you're going to exhale up good go ahead this is hard. Antoine, you're doing a good job. Antoine's a beast. Exhale. Elbows stay straight, okay? 
Watch how he pauses at the end with his arms, Liam. Right? Pause. Exhale. Good. Breathe in here as you go back. Secure. Nice and strong. He's firm all the way around. Exhale. He comes up. Nice job. Okay. Set of 10 of those. Your abs are starting to feel it and you've only done half of each set. So it's, it's a good core burner. And again, he's not stressing his neck. He's not stressing his back. Okay. Now we got to get up and we got to start to get that back involved just a little bit uh, as well because it's a big part of these core exercises. I'm going to demonstrate this one give Antoine a little break. Okay. So Liam, if you come over with me, if you guys have an exercise ball at home, I urge you to get one if you don't. <clears throat> this is a great way to work shoulder stabilization, back strength, and core all in one exercise, okay? It's called a quad rock, or that's what we call it, and um, your knees go about shoulder width apart, your hands come down underneath your shoulders, like so, okay? I, don't, I make sure that I'm not arching up too much, that I'm in a neutral position in my spine, okay? And Antoine, I'm gonna press back into that ball until I can't go any further, right? So I'm gonna press back into the wall. Liam, can you get that indent here? So I press firmly back, okay? It's not just a little press, it's a firm press back. My, I'll feel force in my hands next, okay? So I'll feel the pressure build up in my hands because it's hard to hold that position. And then from there, right, I reach one arm up, Exhale, restart, press back, holding that position, ten on each arm, it's hard, you should try it, it's a great core workout without straining your back at all, okay? Make sure that you have good support, your, your pelvis isn't getting rocked too far forward or you're not arching too much. If you're like, that's easy, okay? I challenge you to do this, right? Knees come up, you press back. And I rocked a little bit there. Try not to rock too much, but it's a challenging one. Here, press back. Ten on each arm, strong abs, good core support, not straining your back. Try these exercises out as a, on, on a routine basis, right? You should do be able to do these exercises three to four uh, times a week where you rest in between, but um, this should be kind of a staple of a lot of your workouts because your abdominal muscles are going to be involved, your core is going to be involved whether you're doing shoulders or your legs or whether you're playing baseball or lacrosse or running sprints, right? It's core is important. It's involved in every one of those routines. So make sure you're training it on a regular basis. Awesome. Thank you for watching episode 19, 19. Right on. I appreciate all the support. Uh, Special Olympics Maryland, thank you so much for associating these videos with your athletes and, and sharing them with your, your people. I hope you guys are enjoying them. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. Uh, until our, our last episode, episode 20, mm -hmm. you'll find out soon what it's going to be about. Until next time.